Joining me now to talk about Khalif's life and the tremendous loss his family is experiencing, I have uh, Khalif's brothers, Kamal and Rahim, with me here, and Paul Prestia, the Browder family attorney, who has filed suit against the NYPD, the Bronx DA, and the Department of Corrections. So just welcome to all of you all for being here. I'm so, so sorry for the loss of your brother. Um, Kamal and Rahim, to you first. I mean, I can't, I, I can't imagine being in your shoes. I can't imagine the loss, the uh, being furious over this whole um, loss of your brother. It, it, this past weekend would have marked one week since he took his own life. How did you hear what happened? I found I was working. And I found out through my next door neighbor. And when you heard, knowing your brother as well as you do, were you surprised? Yes. Were you surprised? How did you hear? Uh, my other brother called me, and uh, he told me what was going on. And I just came back in from my house. Um, I rushed over there, and by the time I got there, uh, the officer came to me. He said, sorry for your loss. I said, what do you mean, sorry for my loss? And he goes, oh, nobody told you. I said, told me what? And then I look, and then I see my brother laying face down. You saw him? Yes. He was laying face down, Ugh. and they put the sheet over him. Did you have a moment with him? I had to hug my, I had to hug my my um my brother's deathless body. It was warm, and I kept on thinking that he was going to turn around and look at me, but he didn't. Ugh. Um. Tell me about your brother when this goes back to, here's, here you go. This goes back a couple of years to when he was a junior in high school. Um, tell me about your brother before he went to Rikers. What kind of guy, what kind of young man was he? He was a fun loving guy. We used to play Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We used to have a game night every weekend where my friends came over, my older brother's friends came over, and we have, like, a competition to see who could outshine each other. <laughs> you were boys. You were boys yes, together. We, boys. we used to play video games. We used to have competitions. On the weekends, we used to play basketball. Sometimes I beat Khalid. Sometimes Khalid beat me. We used to have competition, and that's how it went. So competition, video games, playing hoops. Um, Raheem, what was your relationship like with him? It was the same thing because pretty much we we like did things together when we was younger. He was the baby. Um, he was, yes, he was the youngest. Um, like Kamal said, the thing about the basketball, but he he tried. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. So this is this is Khalif before Rikers. Yes. He goes into Rikers having no idea he would end up spending so many years in there, especially in solitary, which I want to get to, but. Kamal, you visited him. Um, yes. I, mean, I, I was reading this phenomenal uh, New Yorker article where it talked about the night of February 8th, 2012, his 634th day on Rikers. He said to himself, I can't take it anymore. I give up. I mean, he tried to take his life uh, at Rikers. Did you notice um, a, a decline in his per a personality, depression, despair? At what point did you notice that? I noticed that when he was in there for like two going on two years he used to tell me how the guards used to starve him and how he used to beg for food but they wouldn't give it to him and if they when they gave it to him they gave him like half eaten portions like somebody already dug into it it was it was horrible he was losing weight did you notice his physical appearance changing no sometimes i did sometimes i didn't and how was your mother through all this my mother, she was very upset. She was crying a lot. Um, she she couldn't take it. She visited him every day faithfully. And um, every day, every day, my mother went to visit him. She would be in pain. She still went to go visit him. And then she had to. Khalif didn't tell her everything, but he told her enough. Like my brother said, with the starving. He was beaten just about every day. Um, even we would give money to her so he can put in his account, so he can buy stuff and use the phone. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, we get no phone calls from him because they took his money. They took his money and they gave it to somebody else. The question that everyone who is familiar with Khalif's story wants to know is, how does somebody go away to Rikers for three years, spends the bulk of it in solitary confinement, the case up and gets dismissed, he walks out of there... Without an apology. ...with nothing. Right. How does that happen? That's my question. Brooke, it's inexplicable. You would never see this again in your entire lifetime. It was just a massive failing by the criminal and by the criminal justice system at each and every level. It was like a perfect storm, and it was it was horrific. It was horrific. You had the district attorney's office essentially uh, abusing whatever speedy trial laws we have in this state, in this city, almost as if they didn't care that Khalif was in jail. I really don't think they did, uh, and that's not really too far-fetched, to be honest with you, because all they do is have his rap sheet and some paperwork about the arrest. They know nothing about him. They probably didn't even know he was in solitary, but they knew he was in jail, and they, I'm sure they hoped that he would just take a plea, or they thought he would. But he because refused to, because he knew he They didn't want to try this case, but he didn't, unfortunately for them. I just want to mention, because Raheem... Or, or both of you bring up this guard abuse. I would be remiss not in, in saying just last week, three Rikers guards were charged with the 2012 death of an inmate. The mayor here in New York, uh, Bill de Blasio, just announced he will ban solitary confinement for 16 to 18 year olds um, as your case works its way through. And we'll follow this with all of you all. Really, my final question to you, Kamal, and then Raheem is, you know, no amount of money will ever bring your brother back. So what does justice look like for you? To me, Justice is finding out why it happened, why he committed suicide. He should have never been in there for three years for a case that wasn't even accurate. I just want justice found for my little brother, and I hope that all the people that go through this needs to speak up, stand up for themselves, and come forward. My brother was arrested and sent to jail for something he did not do. The supposed person that he committed the crime with wasn't even in the country. Every officer gave a different story. This system, the entire system needs to be, it needs to be redone. There's no reason in the world why you're gonna hold somebody in prison, you keep on prolonging the case with no evidence whatsoever. And then the guards, either the guards need to be, they need to be retrained, they, something needs to happen. Because there's no reason in the world why you should be abusing these inmates. We send people there for them to try to, you know, they did something wrong, you know, nine times out of ten. There are innocent people, but they did something wrong, and it's supposed to be, you know, a way for them to um, to change their lives. This way, when they come out, they'll be re re um, rehabilitated. But that's not what they're doing there. They bring you in there, they try to break you, and then they try to keep you down. They try to they treat you like animals. Hmm. That needs to change. Paul and Raheem Browder, thank you both very much. Again, I am so sorry for the loss of your brother. Please thank stay you. in touch with us. And Paul Prestia, thank you. Let us know where the case goes.